It is possible to be thankful every moment, every day. It, it takes practice and humility. It takes vision and sensibility. It takes practice and humility. It takes vision and sensibility. Hi, and welcome to Tell Me What Happened, the podcast that features people from all walks of life talking about formative childhood experiences and how those experiences have impacted their lives as adults. Tell Me What Happened is sponsored by Sidelining Publishing, publishers of quality books, including Scott Suma's timely work, Don't Act Like the President, available on Amazon or wherever quality books are sold. Tell Me What Happened is also sponsored by LaughSaver.com. Visit LaughSaver.com and record your laughter. LaughSaver.com will keep it for you, now and forever. Your family will appreciate it. It's free and it's easy to use. That's LaughSaver.com. All right, it's time for our interview. I have as my guest Scott Suma, author, minister, retired teacher. Scott's here to tell us about a childhood mentor someone that you might not suspect ordinarily as being someone who might be a guy. Are you ready to tell your story, Scott? Yes, I am, Jay. All right, I'm going to try to get out of the way, Scott, let you tell your story. And then at the end, we're going to ask you how what you've told us impacts your life today. Well, thank you, Jay. I, I want to talk about uh, my sixth grade confirmation. Uh, confirmation is like the last mass sacrament Catholics receive. It's a Catholic bar mitzvah without the hard work, uh, the rite of initiation into Catholic adulthood. You know, when I was in sixth grade, we studied our catechism, attended our religion classes, visited with the priest to ask questions and to answer them. We had to pick a confirmation name. A cardinal would come to your parish for this event. Uh, you'd get special clothes to wear, but most significantly, you had to choose someone to be your sponsor, someone who would guide you in the faith. I had two uncles that lived nearby. One was a jerk and the other was an active alcoholic. I had two brothers. One was kicked out of Catholic high school and always ditched mass and the other was away at college. So I really, I didn't have anyone to choose to be my sponsor. My parents were pushing me to make a decision. So I finally said to them, can I ask my barber? And they were a little stunned. And they said, like, why your barber? I said, he's the most Christ-like person I know. And they said, okay. I first met John Basil when I was in fifth grade. He owned Basil's Barbershop. That's where I'd get my hair cut. But I'd also stop by to see him and just spend some time. His barbershop was his theater. And while in his barber chair, you were the captive audience of one. While cutting my hair, he would break out into song. He would do impressions of politicians and movie stars. He would tell me jokes. He even had a little mouse finger puppet so that when he would cut my hair, it would appear magically on my shoulder and make me laugh. He would reminisce about the past, growing up Italian and serving in World War II. He'd talk about his family life. He spoke of life and would share insights and wisdom with me. Most of all, he would give me support and encouragement. He would tell me how good I was and how bright my future was. And he would ask me what I thought. And he would truly listen to what I had to say. When I asked John to be my guide, he was stunned and speechless. His response was simply, I'm only a barber. But he was so much more for me. And I figured out that John was my first mentor. He was different than all the other adult males in my life. His identity was not tied to his success, his income, or masculinity. He was kind, gentle, caring, and extremely humble. My friends and I were jocks. We played football, baseball, basketball. You know, the personal strength in him was important and being tough made you cool. And some of my friends would even mock him and call him the goofy barber. But I discovered that I not only liked him and enjoyed being around him, 
but I came to realize I wanted to be like him. We remained close friends for years. I eventually stopped getting my hair cut from him, but I would come by to talk. His shop closed, and then he eventually became an assistant in another one, and eventually retired. In retirement, John would go to nursing homes and entertain people. He would sing, tell stories, tell jokes, and make people laugh. John eventually moved in with one of his brothers and eventually slipped into dementia. I saw him one more time. He remembered me. We smiled, we laughed. I remembered him and I reminded him of all that he did for me. How he served as a role model and showed me how to be a good and caring person. I thanked him for all he did. I also recalled with him the confirmation service and how we were kneeling at the altar at St. Catherine of Alexandria's church. We were in a long line of confirmandi and their sponsors, waiting for Cardinal Cody to come down the row and confirm us with a slap on the cheek. And there, with John's hand on my shoulder, I looked down and saw the little mouse, and I laughed, and I was confirmed. John helped shape who I am. He inspired me. He served as a reminder throughout my life, and even now, to be kind and caring, to make time for all and listen to all people, especially young ones, to encourage and uplift others, to bring a little joy and laughter into people's lives. Well, Scott, that's a beautiful story. He sounds like a pretty wonderful guy, this guy, John Basil. I don't know what kind of a barber was he. Was he a good barber? Well, you know, I tell you, <laughs> John's haircuts always needed a little extra work. When I'd come home, my mother would take out a scissors and just fix it here and there. Because the whole time he was cutting my hair, we're laughing, he's telling me jokes, he's you know doing impressions. It's his, his gift was not his cutting. His, his gift was not shaping my hair, it was shaping me. That's great. So how do you think he's really, if, in a real sense, how do you feel like he's impacted your life? In what way exactly? Could you be precise right now? Yeah, you know, I was born in the suburbs and I went to a private high school and I was, I think, my tra trajectory was to become a successful person in whatever field. But it was definitely, I was heading somewhere, you know. And John Basil just kind of knocked me off that path and said, Success and all that's important, but what's really important is being a genuine, caring, loving human being. And this man, who made very little money, as he would say, I'm just a barber. His humility made me want to be like him. You know, that's why I picked him to be my confirmation guide. He, he became a mentor in, at a very young age for me. And... So my whole life, I've always wanted to be like John Basil. Well, thank you, Scott. That was great. I understand you have a little John Basil. You saved the little John Basil for us. Is that right? Something we can hear? I, I found a tape he made for me that he shared some of his thoughts, but where he actually does some of his singing and tells some of his jokes. So I, I think the whole world to hear just a, a snippet of who John Basil was. Oh, that's a great idea. You know, that really is. So, at the end of the show, what we're going to do is we're going to listen to a little John Basil. So if you could send me some of that, we'll, we'll put it in the show. You got it. Thank you, Jay. It was a joy having you on the show. I learned a lot. It was informative. It was moving. And you be safe out there and try not to hurt anybody, okay? All right. So that's our show. I want to thank our guest, Scott Suma, for that wonderful story. Thanks also to our sponsors, Sidelining Publishing and LaughSaver.com. I'm going to end this show a little differently today. What I'm going to do is we're going to end it with a little John Basil music and words of wisdom. Until next time, stay safe out there and try not to hurt anybody. I ended, landed in Casablanca on Christmas Eve, but we were not allowed to to, uh, to uh, write home up where we were stationed at. Our mail was uh, censored. 
So the only way I could write and let them know were was to uh, talk movies, because they all knew I was a movie bug. So we were going to Morocco, and so I wrote, I'm going to go see Bing Crosby in the road to Morocco soon. And do you know it went through? And that's probably why we lost that battle. The Germans got a hold of it, maybe, huh? I don't know. Und Schwitzhauten, das Basilek und Schwitzhaus, die sind drei, und drei Siesen, die sind das. Nein, schneiden, und das ist die größte, das ist die größte, das ist die größte. Yeah, that's one thing about over there. You saw Germans, and then you saw French. Jean, c'était wie Beton. Sie te levé chaud. Sie se pe pou, per tot se te to chaud, to pa pa tso. Yeah. Then you saw the Italian. Hey, Python, get it each. Non dominicare, huh? But I learned a, a song in Italy, and uh, I it was really a tearjerker song. It was beautiful. And uh, this little kid, Italian boy, used to come over, and we were in a tent, and he used to look at my medical books. And being Italian, being foreign, he turned it upside down. He couldn't make out what the anatomy part of the book was, you know, the, the skeletons and things like that. And, and he was humming. And I said, what is that? That's pretty. So then... He brought me the words to the songs. He, they had a very way, nice way of printing. They print beautiful. And uh, to this day, everywhere I go, people beg me not to sing it. Please don't sing it. Please, please don't sing it. But I go ahead and sing it. I, you know, and when you get a microphone in there and you really think you're Tom Jones or Engelberg, Emperor, Emperor Eng, Perry Como. And the other night we went to Falco's at 63rd or around Whipple or somewhere. And uh, I got up and I had to sing this song again because it's an Italian restaurant. And I learned it in Italian and in English. And it goes something like this, but not exactly. Mamma son tanto felice, perché ritorno da te. La mia canzone le dice, che più bel giorno per me. Mamma son tanto felice, viva lontana per te. Oh, mamma, solo per te la mia canzone vola. Mamma, sarai con me, tu non sarai il più sole. Quando ti voglio bene, queste parole d'amore, che ti tospira il mio cuore, forse non si usa mai più. Oh mamma, ma la canzone mia è più bella sei tu, sei tu la vita, e per la vita non ti lascio. People are wonderful, all over. You got to give everybody a chance in spite of their race, creed, or color because you're going to find out, uh, uh, well, they're good, that's all, they're good. I wouldn't be talking to you, to you kids if I didn't think you were good. <laughs>